Hi guys, welcome back. I'm Kevin, here with Dustin, and this week we have a very special guest, Pyro, from Sir Pyro Glasses here, to show you guys some really awesome techniques. A little bit more complicated piece. I think you guys are gonna love it. Yeah, it's awesome to have you here, man, and uh, thanks for coming all the way up from LA uh, to show us some cool stuff. Um, so, how long have you been blowing glass? 16 years this year. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's been amazing. Yeah, it started back in 99. Wow, yeah, that's, that's a long time, and you got to see the whole industry grow and develop from a really early stage of it. It's been a crazy evolution, you know, yeah. seeing all the things change and just seeing all the work change. And now, just in the last year, I mean, glass blowers were coming out of the woodwork like termites. Oh, man, it's yeah, crazy everywhere. to see every, <laughs> all these glass blowers everywhere. Like, in the Revere Glass Gallery, they're just like, Every day, more and more people making stuff and mm -hmm. cool stuff. Amazing like, art, amazing man. stuff. Just blowing yeah. my mind. I'm yeah. just like, wow, I got to step my game up. And I realized I got to get out of the studio and get this social media game going. I'm like, yeah, so like last 16 years, started my Instagram a year and a half ago. What's your Instagram? <laughs> Sir Pyro Glass. There you go. Nice. Yeah, yeah give him a follow and definitely give What's a Foot over Thank here. You. A follow and uh, you know revere glass. Absolutely, we're always yeah. posting stuff up. Great to see everybody posting things on there too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. Well, um, what are you smoking on, Kevin? I have some of this A3 again. I'm really liking it still. This mm -hmm. just mystery genetics, but yeah, tasty. Nice, nice. What do you got? I'm smoking on my personal OG that I uh, grew last year. Oh, that's always fun. Cool. Smoking on something you grew. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Just I, like smoking from something you made, right? It's like dude, all, all you. It's, it's great. That's one of the things I love about smoking off my own pieces with my own flower. It's always nice. For sure. Yeah, it's an amazing feeling, you know. You get to create the device for uh, your medicine, and uh, you can do it just at home. So, yeah. yeah. If you guys have questions um, about that, setting up a studio, just comment on the video. And, um, you know, a lot of people have the same questions. You can post it on the video, or you can post it on Facebook in the Facebook group mm -hmm. Revere Glass mm -hmm. Gallery and um, you know check it out absolutely but, uh, what we'll... are you smoking on Dustin oh uh, I got I, the I think CBD. I might know yeah I was yeah. gonna say I don't know I'm just on that CBD kick it's pretty cool man you guys check it out if you need to do some research but um it's like a lot less psychoactive and it helps mm -hmm. uh, epilepsy you know very significantly and it helps um autism it helps a lot of stuff so it's pretty spectacular yeah it really is amazing anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. um it's it's one of the chemicals in cannabis one of the active chemicals yeah but anyway Absolutely. let's get to this cool sherlock um it's definitely the cool penetration sherlock with encomo so all we'll kinds of tech out. on there let's check it out let's get fun all right let's do it So the first thing you want to do is grab your piece of crucible pole tubing and uh, heat it up with an annealing flame. Yeah, with a good soft uh, propane mixture, with the, both oxygens mixed in lightly, and a uh, nice excess of propane gives you a good soft flame when you come in to uh, start this end. So what I'm doing here is pulling it down so that I can prep some uh, some small sections to make the, uh, the prep work for my uh, encalmos. Just pulling that down to about 16 millimeter tubing. And then you'll cut it off there, and you're going to open up the end. Heat that up, pick it out with the little piece of 2 millimeter glass. And you're just going to uh, seal up to a nice uh, blow tube there. So putting a little air into that connection, make sure it's very nice. And now you're going to go in and cut off some little uh, sections to use later. Just heating that up, and um, <clears throat> going to make sure that's nice and even, put a little air into that. Make a nice little thin walled kind of hemisphere that you can punty up to. Just using your two millimeter rod to uh, use as a punty for your encalmo section. And then we're going to do um, a little break on the V blade. Condensing it down and then you'll pull it apart there. Sometimes if the piece is on a very thin punty, it's better to pull it off with um, the picking it out method than to use the torque force um, to break it off of that. Yeah, definitely on the V-blade, uh, when you're working with the 2 mil punty, it's uh, it's tough on those small ones to actually get it to break effectively without breaking your punty off. So we're just doing the same thing again here, puffing out a little section, then you'll punty up and go in to cut it off. What I like to use also in this case is a, 
a little pause. I go into the V-blade and cut it or give it a good run and then stretch it out a little bit. That way when I go back into the flame, it blows out really thin and even. Just grabbing the reamer and opening that up a little bit. I'm gonna put that on the bench to bench cool and uh, grab the piece and we're gonna make another one. Puffing it out there, making sure it's nice and even and just same process here. Flame good. cutting it and then going into the marber and then going back into uh, pop it off. Then you're comparing your sizes there. Just looking at all three and you'll use those guys later. Now we're just heating up a piece of the green stardust. I'm gonna get that all nice and hot, put a little air into that and make a bubble. I'm gonna make a little bit larger section here. Using the last bit of that little pole that I did earlier to condense down and make the donut section for the mouthpiece. Just making it nice and starting to round it out and then you'll punty up to the face so you can shape that side on your blow tube end. Just heat it up, put a little air into that, make sure it's nice and even. You can see how it really rounds out there. Then you'll crack that punty off and do the same to the front face. Heating it up, adding some air into that, you can see it's really a nice even heat and that's how uh, you get your wall, wall thickness so even and the nice shape. Just picking open a hole here, pulling it real thin. You just get an area hot, kind of push it in and then pull it out and the heat and the flame just kind of opens it up. Picking out the edge there to make sure it's all nice and even, all nice and round. And uh, we're gonna put that on the bench for a second and pop it in the cone. So you're going to seal up to some more uh, green stardust here. Just make that sure that's a really nice and even seal as you go in and work into the crucible tubing. And you're gonna heat up a little section here and pull it down just like you did before. Getting about two inches, an inch and a half hot and uh, pulling it down to about 16 millimeter tubing. Just going into your V-blade to condense where you want to take it off. The blow tube is nice and connected and that the glass on the end is being thickened up so that it can handle any stress or any building that we uh, make with it. Yeah, at this point it's really important to have the blowpipe connection really straight because I'm going to go back to the other end and shape out the top of the bowl and in order to have that nice and round, I have to work from a good straight center. Just heating it up, making sure it gets nice and even, nice and round, and we'll put some air into that and uh, blow it out so it creates a little bit of a bubble on the end of the uh, crucible tubing pole. Condensing that back so it doesn't get too thin, letting it fall back a little with gravity there. Now going in with your uh, two millimeter rod and we're gonna heat okay. that up and pull that out so it makes another little opening. I just want to get the top end of the bowl nice and hot and then I can use gravity to slump it back so that I can get the top of the bowl to match the form of the donut. Now going in here with your punty and you're going to open up a hole on the top and a centered hole is key to making those uh, lip wraps real nice around the bowl. Just heating it up with your reamer and opening that up a little bit before you connect to the 12 millimeter tube. I'm going to go in, heat that tubing again and pull it, pull off a little section there. Put a little air into there. You're just gonna heat that up and puff as you hold it up to get one that kind of uh, squat bubble. Now just using that same technique where we're using the two millimeter rod to open up that holes. Now going with the reamer to open it up. And now you're going to start doing some incalmos or lip wraps, whatever, whatever you wanna call them. You're just taking a rod of black and you'll condense up the end and then seal it right onto that hole. Yeah, so what's important for this technique is to flatten the end of the rod and make a really thin tip on the rod so that you have a small thin disc so you're not applying a really thick point to the end of the bubble. Go in there with the flame, heat it up, and then you want to make sure that the wall thickness is completely even all throughout the new section, and then we're going to blow a hole right in the center of that and then attach another piece to make multiple and combo looking rings. Putting some air in there, heating, putting some air in as you push that air right to the front. And then you'll be able to go in with a punty and pick that open. open your mind. Making sure it stays nice and even as you work it. Right. Making sure that encalmer ring stays nice and uh, nice and stays nice and centered. Your bubble yeah, stays nice and round. Just going in there to pick it out um, each, on each level. So you pick this one out, open it up a little bit, open it up a little bit more with the reamer, and then it'll be ready to attach your next one. Just heating it up, going back in there, making sure it's completely even and using the paddle to make sure that it's completely even before you attach your next ring, which is the Illuminati. 
So on these, it's really important to start with a small opening so that you can get the encombos nice and tight, especially when you're trying to blow out a small diameter tube. Heat that up, connect it all really nice and evenly. Condensing that Illuminati in there and using the same technique as with the black, making sure that air bubble is right at the surface there and that the rest of the bubble is staying nice and condensed, nice and even. Now Kevin's going over to grab a piece of two millimeter rod because we're using a little bit of it, opening up all this stuff. Yeah, it's a little easier when you're not using the four inches of punty to do your connections. Yeah, I, I managed to bring enough blow pipes to do the whole project and then I came with one four millimeter punty. I was like, uh, this isn't gonna work. <laughs> Thankfully we have some, so going in here and you're just uh, adding more and calmos on, opening up holes, just using that same technique, keeping it nice and even as you go. Opening that up and going in there with the reamer. So if you notice, I like to open up uh, the reamers and stages before I do these attachments here. Uh, it, it makes it a little bit easier to get a consistent opening so that you're not stressing it and forcing it open. Sealing those two together there, and you can see they were exactly the right size. Putting some air in, and now you're going to work it out into a nice, even bubble. Heat it up, going back in there, and going to make sure that's nice and even. Going to blow it out to the bubble. Again, so it's really helpful with those prep sections to have them all pretty consistently around the same size. Letting that fall back with gravity there, blowing while it's up to get that squat bubble. Really get that kind of a uh, disc shape. Just heating that up, going back in there with the sharp flame, making sure that it just folds, kind of collapses on itself a little bit and uh, makes a nice even disc shape, more of an oblong bubble. Now you're going to open a perpendicular hole for another blow tube. Yeah, and by popping the hole on the side here before I take off the blowpipe, I can easily attach a punny onto the end, taking off my initial blowpipe and then attaching this new Encalmo mouthpiece attachment point. So you're going in here on some clear and you're going to use the same technique to lay a couple Encalmos you'll attach right to the donut. Yeah, at this point I've already got a little Encalma or a little section of Illuminati on the end there. I'm trying to make sure it's nice and straight before I blow it out and uh, or dab it out and then attach a, a nice black section there. And consistency is key when doing these, making sure each section is nice and straight before you move on. I mean, one off will make the next one off and then, uh-oh, the whole thing's going to look a little wonky. Yeah, it throws it all out of whack. And you guys can use this technique for uh, more than just making little rings. You could actually build a whole piece out of this or use it in any way you guys can think of. It's a great little tech. Just opening that up, same as you did before. Making sure it's a nice even hole there. That'll ensure a nice connection. Yeah, I think originally before I started using this technique for Encalmos, I used to do multi-stacked, uh, well, for Encalmos, I used to do little Encalmo carbs on pieces. Mm, nice. Just grabbing the piece out of the kiln. Gonna grab a uh, little two millimeter rod again. Punty up opposite that first blow tube. But when you attach a two millimeter punty, you guys wanna be really careful, especially with the piece that's this heavy, because if you knock it at all, it would break off. Pulling out that glass there, and when you're working with a little punty like this, you really need to make sure the glass is actually as hot as you need it to move. Can't force it with a punty like that. Using a 12 millimeter uh, blow tube as a sofietta just to blow that other side out, uh, really good technique and using the tools that are in front of you. If you're gonna knock something off, make sure you do it on the base of your torch or on the marver, not the barrel. Unless you have a Red Max, then it's fine. Or Carlisle or any other torch but a GTT. <laughs> not, not the graphite of my marver. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the metal part, the metal yeah, part. For sure. Yeah, for sure. So just switching to access and that's gonna bring those rings uh, on the face of, of the piece. We're just gonna change the look and look really clean. Taking that last little bit of clear that was left by that punty off and now you're ready to actually uh, pop the holes and make it a donut. Just heating it up, getting it a little bit thin, blowing it out right in the center and then uh, pulling out the excess glass so it can make thin and then uh, open up a little hole. Yeah, I like to blow out like a little tip so you get a nice even point for the center point and then dab that out so you know where your center is really well for the top of the donut. Just grab your bowl push there, push it in a little bit a few times, make sure it's really nice and even. You can do this in several stages, just make sure it's centered and heat up a little bit, push in a little bit more. But making sure not to tag it against the other side. Yeah. Now you go close that hole with your bowl push and puff out in the flame, open up the other side. 
and then uh, reclosed up a little bit because there was too much glass. So we're just going to pull a little bit of glass off of there. Make it nice and thin. That'll ensure a nice even inside of your donut. Blow that hole open and uh, make sure there's no bubble trash. Just melt that in there. And if it's too much, pick it out a little bit before you connect it. Now using your reamer from both sides to make the donut. And you see the flame starting to go through the donut. The hole is there. And uh, just make sure your two sides are connected and then melt in the inner wall to make sure it's really nice and even. And you can shape that inner wall to get bigger and bigger, but the outer wall is going to be the size of the disc it was. You're not, you can't really expand the outer wall. Yeah, and you want to be really careful at this point to actually not let the outer wall get hot uh, and keep its form. Like at any point you, with the glass, you want to keep a one solid state form that keeps your concentric round and the outside of the donut at this point is what holds ground. And you can tell that by looking at the heat and the gradient of the heat on the glass, the inside circle is much hotter than the outside circle. And so at this point, the end of the donut was a little bit less thick than the, the mouthpiece side, so I evened it out just there at the end before I blow out this hole here. Just heating up, blowing out a little nub, and then you'll blow that in the flame to make sure it's nice and centered. A little easier than picking it since you don't need to worry about tagging it to the inside. Then you'll pop that guy in the kiln for about 10 minutes at least to make sure it comes up to temperature. I'll grab the black rod and we'll do a couple of more of those sections. So you heat it up, melt it in, grab the two millimeter, blow out the hole, attach your next section and so forth. And man, I bet we all wish it was this quick in real life, huh? <laughs> this uh, this whole Sherlock took about two hours, all told, to put together, and you were hustling. You were really hustling a couple sections there. Yeah, I, uh, I did a practice one to make sure that I could squeeze it into the two hours, and uh, it was tough. But I uh, did a great job. came out great. Just heating it up, grab it with your reamer, and you have the other piece ready to go in your hand. Put that there, um, both in the flame. You can see the lips are the same temperature, and the gradient is uh, the lips are the hottest, and then it moves slowly back. So yeah, coming into this point, it's really important that you have your prep balls always be a consistent size. That way you don't have to make adjustments when you come into it. You can always open up your uh, Encalmo section right to the right size of the prep ball. And that's one of the reasons I use all the different size reamers. Connecting those up and then putting some air in, puffing from that connection out and making another uh, really kind of disc shaped bubble there to make another donut. At that point, I really carefully use the two mil to kind of press it together a little bit and a, a, a really narrow flame to uh, consolidate that disc. Just heating up the face here, you're going to use your punty to open up a little hole. So just going in a little bit different order here, blocking that hole with your bowl push and popping that hole in the side. Seeing that up and uh, putting the reamer in there to open that up a little bit, and then attach your two millimeter punty to that. Now you have to take off that original blow tube, a little trickier with that already pushed in there but just need to make sure it doesn't tag. Quickly pull that together, uh, thin it out a little bit and make the donut. And uh, then we'll switch it to the blow tube to finish off the donut. I'm gonna pop that guy in the kiln for a little bit, let him come up to temperature while you make some uh, prep and calmos. Just heating that up, pulling off a little piece of glass on the end, and then blowing a hole in there, opening it up with the reamer, getting your calmo sections all prepped. And of course you're putting some air in, in between putting the color on and opening that hole, pushing that bubble right to the front, thinning out the glass. Grab your reamer, open that up to about uh, 16, 18 millimeters. Make sure it's nice and even on your marver, and you're going to go in to seal it up. And just attach that to your um, donut there, and that's going to end up being the mouthpiece. And so try to make a good natural quick seal here so that I can go back into the bottom, open up the donut and get the center of the donut sealed up. Uh, that way I can go back and even out the mouthpiece connection again. So pushing those two together and uh, connecting the walls, going back in there with a small flame, making sure that the inner wall is getting hot, moving and getting connected and even, and then uh, going out and opening up the hole on the end to connect to the next piece. Puffing that open, using your reamer to open it to that standard size you like to use. Now you want to grab some of that crucible tubing. Uh, it's about 16 millimeters and then connect that to the uh, donut, <clears throat> making sure that's a really nice even seal where the walls are fluid and going into each other and it's all one piece. Yeah, you can see that really becomes one piece of glass there. And then you're gonna work your way down, shape the rest of that uh, neck. It'll be the neck of the Sherlock. 
Yeah, I like to make sure it's really consistent at this point because I have to do a lot of deep bending both in the top of the neck and the lower neck there. So it really helps to have the wall thickness nice and even. Reaming that open to that same consistent diameter. And that's ready to go back in the kiln for later. Time for some more Encalmos here. And this will be the bowl. One more sandwich stack. Just heating that up. A um, couple more Encalmo sections. Blowing and grabbing the two millimeter rod to pick open the hole. Um, it's a great practice and a cool way to make this technique. Popping it open, using your reamer there. Now we're going to connect the last uh, crucible pole section to this, which is the green stardust. Yeah, and this piece I'm attaching right now will actually be the inside of the bowl. That way the Encalmo rim will wrap around the outside edge of the bowl. Just heating that up and making a nice fully round piece, making sure the walls are connected and everything's fluid together. And using that concentric shape of the pre-blown bubble to center up that Encalmo so that I don't lose the form and the concentric round of that Encalmo. Let it slump back to get a nice wide base. Matches kind of the form of those donuts. And you're actually going to grab that uh, piece uh, uh, that is your carb out of the kiln, and you'll seal those two together. Yeah, this is a weird one. I, uh, it's the only piece that I do that I actually attach the carb before the mouthpiece. Now that you have that other blow tube sealed on there, you're going to go in, take off the one on the bottom of the bowl area, and start to shape that U-bend uh, a little bit. Yeah, and so here I, I go back and forth between cleaning up the weld and uh, making that bend for the bottom end of the Sherlock. That way I can use the, the heat base uh, in uh, different areas and uh, I don't lose my form and uh, start flopping around at that weld. Let's you kind of save time, not have to bridge up there, kind of lets you just quarter that seal. Yeah, as close as you can get those to match up is the best the, when you pop that hole for the lower bend. Um, you just want to be prepared for the top section to be able to come through and connect nicely. Heat that up on the bottom, open it up, and uh, that's going to be the, the place where we connect these two pieces together to make that nice U-bend seal. Going in there, making that hole a little bigger, putting some air through it there. So now we're going to attach a section of the bridge to where the bowl will be, because we're going to pull that out later, and you won't even be able to tell there was a bridge there. Pop that in the kiln. And now you're going to do the same, prep up a bridge on your mouthpiece area, and then you'll seal those two kind of bridge nubs together. I'm really picky about not using bridges anywhere particularly that are going to uh, have to be cleaned up later on the piece. Specifically, if you notice, I, I, I bridge past the mouthpiece, past the carb, and then I bridge right where the bowl is. So I end up taking that glass out and blowing the bowl hole right where that bridge is. Now heating up the glass and connecting it to uh, the other part of the bridge and that's going to complete that section of it. Making sure it's in the right spot there. If it's a little too thin, you can go back into your flame, condense that bridge back down. You want to make sure your bridge is nice and solid so it does its job and holds your piece there. Yeah, as you can see, I got a little bit too hot, so I come back into it with that Lynx flame and even it back out a little bit here so that I have a nice, solid, stable bridge. And now you're uh, ready to go in and start to make that seal. Yeah, and so at this point, it's really not important that it's really the bridge is pretty. It just needs to be stable. Just heating up that other blow tube to take that off. And if you're going to connect your bridge to your blow tube, please make sure that you uh, melt that fully in because as soon as you get that bridge uh, sealed and you go into the place and it's all hot, if the bridge isn't sealed, that's when the piece will break, when everything's hot. I'm actually melting it in real good and then applying a little bit of air pressure right at the top there so that it's a really good weld. So now we're just heating up the U-bend there. We're gonna connect one to the other and finish off that shape and make sure that it's all really nice and fluid. So now I'm back bending a little bit just to make an adjustment to make space so that I can bend up the, uh, the other connection point. Uh, I used to pre-bend the mouthpieces. I've just found that it's a little bit easier to get a good solid bridge and uh, do some of the adjustment afterwards uh, in the penetration because I'm not fighting with the donut trying to get a bent tube through. So now you're just going in there, connecting the two, and you can pull that with a punny. And it doesn't really matter at this point <clears throat> if one piece is thinner than the other. We're just going to heat that whole thing up, and then all the glass is going to flow and make sure that's a really uh, even piece in the end. Since you're just working with solid color tubing, you can kind of just get that seal together. 
and then puff it back out. If you're using line work or something, you might need to be a little more careful with your connection. Yeah, definitely. If I was using line work, I would have prevent the mouthpiece and made sure that the connection points were already pre-aligned so that as I pass through the donut, I would have actually been making two welds at once, the bridge and the actual connection at the bottom. I was just grabbing um, <clears throat> a little bit of heat in there and using the tongs to straighten that out, making sure that all of the pieces aligned and everything is on center. You can look at it from multiple directions and uh, just kind of see if you're, you got everything straight there. Yeah, there's several different points in this piece that I have to even out the alignments because there's so many straight lines that really point out to any kind of misalignment. Heat that up and then we're going to grab with the tongs, adjust that a little bit and then uh, let it all set up in the right place. Heating another area, checking it from all your angles there and adjusting that donut just a little bit. Yeah, and always remember to go back in afterwards once you get it solid to go through and check all the stress and burn out any stress in the points there. You're going to take off the bridge on the mouthpiece and uh, the bowl and uh, do the last steps. Putting some heat into this piece here and you come back in slow there to that mouthpiece. Use some bushy flame to get that tubing nice and hot, nice and evenly warm to do the bend. Just pull that down a little bit, making sure it's really nice and even. You don't want to kink that at all. Put a little air in as you make the bend. And you can do that a little slower with a bushy flame and let gravity do it, or it can be a little bit hotter and you can kind of put it into shape. Yeah, at this point I'm bridging back to the, uh, the carb point there. That way I can go back in and get the neck nice and even and it's not going to move around on me. So it's like another little bridge and then he's going to even out that bend that he just did to make sure that it's all really nice and fluid and the lines are really nice. The hardest part about doing this point is getting your flame control just right because you are heating up the inside of the donut. You have to be really careful that you don't, that your donut's really consistent and it's not going to crack or that your donut's not going to blow out and stick to the side of your penetration tube. So just put that in the kiln for about 10 minutes and uh, then let that settle up. We can go work on the other parts. Make sure not to put it in the kiln when it's too hot. Don't want it to slump or anything. So you pull it out after about 10 minutes there and go in to open up the bowl hole. Just getting that really thin right in the place that you want to pop it out using your small links flame to pop that hole and then use the bull push to really push that right in the center of those outer and calmo rings and make sure that's the edge of the bowl. You wanna make sure it's really nice and even. You can go in multiple times and uh, push it down, get it centered, push it down. Yeah, here I went through at the back just to make sure that that calmo is nice and circular around the edge of the bowl. Going back in to work at any tool marks there you can see it's really nice and centered right around the edge there. Put it in for another 10 minutes or so, let it come up to temp, and you're ready to finish it off. Now we're just gonna open up the uh, mouthpiece there and pull it off right in the center. Uh, take that bridge off and uh, you can, we can either pick that out or you could blow hard and pop it out, but picking out is going to be a little bit more controlled. Yeah, another thing is uh, in this specific design, blowing it out, I definitely don't recommend because hot glass and hot air in your eyes and face really kind of suck. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you are wearing glasses, but when you blow straight through a, a hole like that into your face, it's uncomfortable. So now using the annealing flame, going to heat up the 12 millimeter rod. You're going to pull that off of the carb there leaving as little clear as you can, and then you'll use your punty to pull the rest off and dab open that hole. Now, I, I skipped a trip to the kiln here, but uh, generally between doing the mouthpiece and carb, you want to give it a good soak in the kiln to make sure you don't lose core temperature. Just heat that open, let it open up, and finish off the shape with your reamer. And there you go, that is all finished up. Yeah, that's cool. Um, definitely nice complicated piece for you guys to work on, and uh, that piece is actually for any of you guys. Just comment on the video, let, let us know what you think, let Pyro know what you think of his work, and um, we'll ship that right off to you. You can see those really nice Incalmo rings there, and the way the black almost hides the Illuminati, and then when you hit it with the black light, it really pops. Yeah, boom, it just changes all from green to purple, and then the Illuminati turns from like clear to green, and it looks like kind of the opposite effect, so yeah, it's a really cool thing that you can do with the colors. Yeah, I really like how the green stardust looks under the black light. It almost turns into its own color, this like purple sparkle. It's really nice. Donuts are all really nice and even. You can see all the welds are all one piece there. And everything flows really nice. Excellent bend and everything worked in. Oh, I'm, just, I'm really happy with how the piece came out. I'm glad that everything worked out. Hey guys, welcome back. 
thanks for checking out that awesome demo with Pyro. Um, we hope that you learned something that you could use in your own work, you know, something that, that you could do, a tip or trick. And uh, I'd love to see what you guys do. So uh, if you want, post it in the Revere Glass Gallery and uh, we'll check it out. But you got the penetration, a couple ways of doing combos, nice U-bend, a lot of cool techniques that, uh, that you can try out there. Absolutely. So uh, I have some questions for you guys. First up, uh, Dustin Kestrel Glass would like to know what kind of clear, excuse me, what kind of clear glass do we use? Uh, we use shot. Um, shot glass is cool. usually the best. Um, sometimes we use Pyrex um, or Cymax. Uh, those three are pretty much standard good yeah. brands. Um, there's Durand, which is another brand in, in the uh, in Germany, but um, it's a little rare to get. Yeah. Yeah, I'd say shot and Cymax are the big two. Yeah, most I hear about. Yeah, Cymax is is really good for fuming. It'll really uh, bring those colors out and give you uh, deeper deeper effects when you're fuming. So yeah, Cymax always trips me out because it has that blue. You can it's noticeably mm -hmm. different. You look at it from the end. It has that blue hue to the tubing. Yeah, it's like, like blue or purple, the and the other ones are like green, green. or blue. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Cool. Next up. Colton Hodges would like to know, are there any colors that suck to write with, kind of doing the implosion technique? That's well, the cadmium colors are harder to, to, to work with, but you just have to use a soft flame and melt them in real slow, and uh, it'll totally work. Okay, but it really um, depends on suck to write with. I mean, like yeah. for an implosion. Right? I mean, blue exotic. Maybe something like that. Right, something or that something will maybe destroy like your marble. Like you just don't want to use it like in, yeah. in an implosion, first of all, yeah. because it's just going to boil while you're trying to draw lines, and if you're not careful with the flame, and then when you implode it, it's just going to crack because it, it's not stable in deep encasement. Yeah, so you yeah. want to try to work with a color that you can melt in smoothly, you know, something that doesn't have too much sparkle in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, stay away from dense sparkles. Uh, heavy transparent sparkles are are nice for accents mm -hmm. in in deep encasement, but they don't do well for writing because you're not going to see it. Last up, from Goodfellow Gambino, you'd like to know what shade glasses do you guys wear? Um, I like to have all three. So, well, I I have three. I have uh, the pink shade. I have uh, shade number three and shade number five. I use the pink shade for most of my clear work and any light color like fuming work, and then I use. Um, the three for basically most work, and the five for dark colors like blue and uh, black and things like that. Yeah, it's really nice to have all those around when you're uh, working on various different styles and techniques and colors. Your very soul could be to what you are going to see. You know, you can hand one of them your pink shade, one of them the shade fives while you're using your shade threes. Cool. Well, I think it's time to give away that uh, pendant. All right, uh, it is going out to Amit Ellick. I hope you enjoy. Thanks a lot for watching, and thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, comment on the video, and you could win this week's project, which is the awesome Sherlock from Pyro. Absolutely. Thanks so much for coming by, Pyro. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. Thanks, guys. Time. Until See next, next time. time.